Now, I left without thinking of uh, doing a video here. And I took a lunch. And then I got, or my next location or job site was going to be further out. Like 45 minutes out. So then, um, by the time I was going or heading out that way, one of my guys was done and he was closer. So then he jumped to that call. And then coincidentally, I got, uh, the next call that came in for me was the same location I was at this morning. So now I'm back here at the same location. And now they have me checking uh, a biscuit freezer. So right now we're gonna work on that. They said it's not freezing and it's leaking water. Alright, so you had a bad motor on one, it even fell apart on me. Trying to get that, that side disconnected, just snapped off. So I can't really use a universal because the universal one, I'm pretty sure the shaft sticks out way too much and this is right up against the grill. And uh, I don't think I have any room for that. I'm trying to picture, I don't have a universal one on me, but we're gonna order OEM because I can at least get one unit going. The other one was misdiagnosed by one of our guys or he couldn't figure it out. I think it just needs a good cleaning. Uh, as soon as I shoved the brush in there, I, I was able to get airflow and it wasn't breathing before. So let's uh, take care of that one for them. It got dark. This is supposed to be hail. Oh shit. Alright, so we're getting hail? What the hell? All right, so now, man, I messed up. We uh, should have cleaned out the second one. I fucked up. Should have cleaned them when they were both out. Now, I ended up checking two biscuit freezers because they're like, oh, they both do the same exact thing. They don't freeze, they leak water. So, I tried to record what I could. Like I said, I wasn't even sure of, of, of doing a video, but I wanted to show something that uh, one of our guys missed. So, on these Dell fields, I mean, they're pretty common. I believe a lot of people work on these uh, kind of uh, coolers or freezers. The fan's at the bottom and it's sucking up air and then it distributes it across the coil and it comes out of the coil. So, I don't know what he had done to it. It does have a piercing valve. Uh, service port pier piercing service port and I didn't even check the charge I didn't mess with the charge it was cooling and it seemed to be uh, dropping to temp it's like at 10 degrees I'm not gonna mess with it the one I was called to 
when I pulled it out, everything was running except the fan motor. Took off the grill, pushed it around. It was, you know, it wasn't spinning. It wasn't gonna turn on. It wasn't stuck or anything like that. So bad motor, uh, it was extremely hot, brittle. I took off one of the connections to it and it kind of just broke off the whole uh, tab and everything. So that one needs a, a fan motor. It needs to be cleaned. I, I messed up. I should have done the clean today, but it's I got distracted with the hail. Uh, I was chatting with the managers for a while about the hail. There was a little girl that got, I guess, dropped off to pick up food inside. And uh, by the time she collected and paid, and she, there was a little, like, little kid. By the time she collected and paid, the hail started. So then she was afraid to go outside. So we were out there. I mean, I didn't do much, but we we're trying to help her. They figured something out. Yeah, by that time, and then it got really, so we had small hail, really big hail, and then really bad rainstorm. Now it's like super sunny. So, you know, that's that's kind of what happens here where I'm at. So got distracted and I decided to pack up because the other unit was uh, already temping and it was already five. I could not get the part or the fan motor anyway. So. Then I get to clean it. I did clean the little um, grill. I need to double check if I brought it with me. Uh, the grill and the fan blade cleaned it up. Now, if you notice, I found it a little suspicious that one had a super dirty fan blade and grill, which is normal on these. And the other one was squeaky clean. So obviously the squeaky clean one was not pulling in air, hence not pulling in flour, dirt, dust, like the other one did. So I figured there was no airflow on that one. So then if you go across the, the coil and you don't feel any air blowing out, it's plugged up. So you're not gonna see it because it looks, well, this one looked burnt, I don't know why. It was all brown, it's probably grease, but it's gonna look squeaky clean. It's gonna look silver most times if there's no grease on it or anything. And not until you look inside, which this one was very hard to because um, super long, it's kind of hard to shine a light through the bottom, but it's plugged up. So the only way is to either throw air through it, which I was a little afraid because I'm right by where they're prepping food. So I decided to use a pressure washer and go through it. My portable one is not super strong, just gets the dust and dirt out. I use a Viper, um, what do you call it? A Viper cleaner from Refrigeration Technologies. The little aerosol spray gets in there really good, foams up, and then you rinse it off the water. Uh, if it is that dirty or if you need to push through stuff, you do need to rinse it with water and clean it out. So once I did that, did, did that, we put it back together. Now on these, when you put the guard, the guard goes in basically to the frame of the motor. So you gotta make sure everything lines up right. But the holes in the panel are not circle, they're oval, cause they're just there for you to go through and like a guide. Since they're oval, uh, that gives you play with the grill. So I accidentally pushed it all the way down, turned it on, I walked away from it, came back, and I was like, it's still, you know, it's still at 20, it's kind of weird. I looked underneath and the blade was stuck, so I had to loosen it, pull pull the grill towards me, basically swivel it, and then the blade started moving, then I tightened it. So that one has an adjustment because it has a uh, an oval, basically, where you can move the grill. I don't know why, I guess if you need to adjust it with an aftermarket or something, but uh, just be careful because it has to be exactly in the middle for the blade to freely move, throw air, all that. On this one, the uh, grill is right up against the motor and shaft and blade. So like, if the shaft is any longer, it's gonna hit and we can't use the universal there. But they have them set aside for me already. I just, uh, I'm not gonna pick them up till Monday. So we will come back Monday and we'll be putting in that motor, cleaning out that coil, and then we'll just make sure that the other one's working. They also said something about water, but it's probably because it iced up 
funny enough, both were the same issue icing up, or to me icing up because they said there was a lot of water, and then um, not reaching temp, which one was the motor was dead, and the other one the uh, coil was plugged, so neither one was rejecting the heat and causing the same issue on both. Two different problems. Uh, so when we put that motor in, I just want to clean the coil so that we don't have an issue with it like we did with the other one. So we're gonna, you know, come back when we have that. Uh, put in the OEM, get them both going, check the temp on the one that I did fix, make sure that's working. Oh, and before anybody says anything, this customer does not want to pay overtime ever and uh, they're not gonna pay the fees to get the part after hours. So we'll be back on Monday. And I just wanted to get one of them working because they were both basically down. So we got one going, you know, they're happy about that. And then they'll wait on Monday to get the other one working. All right, so we went to get, get the part. This is the part we're dealing with. It is a C-frame shaded pole motor. Got the part number off a of breakdown on Parts Town. So we don't normally order from Parts Town, but it's a good place to get part numbers, get breakdowns, stuff like that. So was able to find it locally. Uh, the other day it was after five, so I wasn't gonna get it then. Like I said, I just wanted to get one going and then we're gonna fix the other one. And hopefully they have two working freezers after today. So let's, uh, and then we're, we're going OEM because you can find these uh, if you guys didn't know, this is a C-frame motor. Um, you can find these universal, and then you can also even flip the rotation, all that good stuff. There's normally two wires that come out where you can make a connection, uh, but sometimes the shaft is a little too long. So this one, I needed this exact profile because it's fitting um, right up against the grill. And then I just plug it in. I don't have to make any extra connections. You know, it's all OEM original, so then this is just plug and play. Now I do carry a lot of universal motors in my van for emergencies, after hours, or weekend calls, but I also do light commercial. So a lot of the stuff that I, see, <clears throat> that I see that's like 10 tons and under, the condenser fan motors are nothing special. Uh, the universal ones that I use, the uh, Economaster ones, usually last just as long as the uh, OEMs and there's no real uh, drop off or anything so or evaporator motors on walk-ins too I, I i'll do the uh, uh universal and even for ecm i use uh the rescue motor brand for those so for the most part universal but every now and then you need the oem part especially for fit and i forgot to clean these off the other day because i kind of just took off so I'm gonna give them a spray down real quick. They're not damaged or cracked whatsoever. So we're gonna try and reuse them. If not, I do have extras. All right, it took an extra, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, but I'll hit the last of it with some hot water inside. But, uh, you know, just a cleaner, brush, some rags. Also these uh, refrigeration technology rags i was cleaning my hands and then I also give it a a wipe down because it's a textured rag got some of the little things off that i couldn't get but much better right and a uh, customer will appreciate it i mean not only will the fan work much better without all that weight on it that dust but if they go in and look at it it's not going to be super uh, funky dirty and they won't be like hey what did you do it looks the same
right, so we got uh, that one going. It was a, a pain in the ass. I got it all on camera, so I'm pretty sure you saw me struggle. Normally I don't have that issue, but it did not want to go on there. And then it only goes on a certain way. I put the bracket on backwards. So that was on me the first time. And then uh, after that, it just didn't want to catch. I actually had to go in there with pliers and pull on the blade to get it like lined up. And it was still offset, so I had to go in at an angle, which was kind of hard to to turn. But since I had the pliers holding uh, the motor for me, I kind of like wedged it in there and we got it. To me, smaller equipment is always the hardest. The smaller it is, the harder it is to work on it. And I will fight you on that. It's just big walk-ins. You go in there, you have all this, this room or whatever, bigger commercial equipment. On the reach-in, my hands barely fit in there. Some stuff, if something goes wrong, it takes even longer than it would on something bigger. So it took me a while to get that going. Like I said, these are these are really old Dell fields and normally they don't like to, to put too much money into them. So I was surprised, you know, I mean, it wasn't too bad. It was just a fan motor, you know, we'll build them for that. And then a cleaning, so pretty simple. Uh, they're not too hard to work on. If you do, on the freezers, there's a, a controller controller on the back. It's It looks like a mechanical knob, but if you open it up, it's actually a box and it's a, like a digital controller or not digital, electronic controller. So that does all the defrost, uh, temperature control and all that stuff in that little box. And for some reason, when I unplug and plug these Dell fields back in, if you ever work on these, they never turn on and uh, I mess with the knob a little bit and you know I waited a few minutes I always have to go all the way off it doesn't click at least on these I always have to go all the way off and then all the way on after I plug it in and then it, it'll randomly start so if you plug it in and it doesn't come on you need to turn it act like you're turning it off and turning it back on and then that always starts them up for me I don't know what it is about those controllers so yeah Hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. Uh, remember to like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff, and I'll see you guys.